Bonjour, mes amis, and welcome to Gourmet Cooking. We're going to travel today right here at home. We're going to stay in Pensacola and do some Gulf Coast cooking. We're going to take a wonderful flounder, debone that flounder, and stuff it. Stuff it with crab meat, shrimp, onions, and other wonderful flavors, and then bake that. That is one of the specialties of the area. And with that, we're going to have a dish that's very old and you see occasionally on the menus around town. It's called Nassau grits. That's grits cooked with uh, bell pepper, tomato, bacon, and ham, and onions. It's quite, quite interesting. It's a great accompaniment to fish. And along with that, we're going to have a good old-fashioned coleslaw. So let's get started with that. And for those of you that are interested, the recipes are on page 58 and 59 of volume 3 of Gourmet Cooking. All right, we'll put these recipes aside. And <clears throat> I've started the onions cooking for the stuffing, but I think we're going to put that aside. We'll come back to that. And I did that because it takes a little time, and we'll discuss that in a little bit. We want to start with our uh, Nassau grits, yes, and put a little butter in this skillet. And uh, we've got the heat on, not skillet, but a stock pot, really. We want about two tablespoons of butter. We'll get that hot. And then we'll go to uh, our vegetables that go into that. Now, this is our Nassau grits. It's a combination of grits and a number of aromatic vegetables. Now, we're going to have to cook the vegetables first. The grits is already cooked, and I'll get that shortly. We, we have two medium onions that have been chopped. And we're going to start our grits, our Nassau grits, with our onions in this butter, which you can hear sizzling now. So we'll start with the onions and let those cook for a moment. And while they're cooking, we're going to add some bell pepper. I have about a cup and a half of bell pepper. Along with that, we're also going to add some nice boiled ham. And I have about a cup here, and I'm going to cut the little piece I have left into small cubes and add that to what I already have, and that will go into our grits, along with about a cup and a half of nice tomatoes, which I've chopped. These were canned tomatoes. I find them very refreshing, and uh, we cut them into small pieces. So we can now go to... Our grits are our Nassau grits. We want to add the bell pepper to the onion. Stir that around, mix that well. And then add our ham. And we'll mix that. Now the dish only requires a little salt and you can either add that to the grits or to the vegetables. We have added some to the grits. We'll add just a little bit to the vegetables. And then we'll add the final ingredient for this aromatic concoction, which is our nice tomatoes. Now, we blend all this together, and you're going to find that they're going to give off a lot of liquid the tomatoes especially. Now, they were drained. These canned tomatoes were drained. But we're going to <clears throat> let them cook with these other vegetables, and you'll find that they're going to throw off a fair amount of liquid. This needs to cook for one hour, one whole hour. So we're going to put that aside and let that uh, cook in our imagination, and we'll use what I've already cooked when we're ready to put the grits together. All right, we have that. We'll put our onions back on to the heat and let those come up to heat. And we're going to make a dressing or a filling for our flounder. We're going to get to our flounder shortly. But we need to make the dressing and let it set aside a minute to cool a little bit. And that's going to require these onions, which I've already started. Let's look at these. <clears throat> this is, <clears throat> excuse me, two large onions that were cut and chopped. And we cooked in butter for about 15 minutes. You notice that they're turning brown and they're caramelizing. The sugar in the, in the onion is caramelizing and it's developing a wonderful flavor. And that's what we want to do, so we cook these slowly. Now this took about 15 minutes. That's why I started it 
before we went on the air. So we'll let that come back to heat because it was off for a minute or two. And we're going to prepare some of the other ingredients we need for our stuffing. And that is going to be some green onions, about eight, and I already have most of them chopped. But we'll add these to the ones I already have. And we're going to need some garlic. We have these cloves of garlic. Now, I have, I want to crush them so I can just give them a good whack with the knife and then chop as finely as I want. And that can go immediately into our dish with the onions uh, and let those cook with these caramelized onions. They're so fragrant and the flavor is wonderful. It brings out the wonderful sweet taste of the onions to let them cook very thoroughly and caramelize. Cleaning our board a little bit. <clears throat> we can add to our dressing our green onions. And let those saute along with the white onions and the garlic. Oh, what a wonderful fragrance. Go gonna complement those flounder that we have very much. Now there are several other ingredients that go into that. We have some nice uh, pimento, which we have all ready to go in. And we have also some boiled shrimp and some crab meat. Now these shrimp, were rather nice. I boil those in a seasoned broth, salt, pepper, uh, some bay leaf, and other nice seasonings. There's several recipes, and we need to chop these into small pieces, not terribly fine, but we do need them so that they will distribute throughout this mixture. Now this was about two pounds of shrimp that were boiled and then peeled and it's yielding about a cup, maybe a little more of the shrimp tail meat after shelling. So we can now add this to our mixture of onions, garlic, and green onions. And we want about a cup and a half of some nice crab meat. Now I'm using the dark meat simply because it's my preference. I like the dark meat, it has a nice sweet taste. Uh, it's also usually less free of, um, or more free rather, uh, of shells than the white variety and therefore it's easier to pick out the shells. So we have our two seafood mixtures that go into our dressing. So we need to mix all that, get it all nice and hot. We'll add a little salt and pepper. So we have our pepper. We can add pepper and a little salt. And we're going to add this nice pimento. But just to make sure that it's small, I'm going to chop that a little further. And we will then just pick that up and put that right into our mixture. And we have just about completed our stuffing for the flounder, except that we need to bind all this together. And that's done with a little breadcrumb and a raw egg. So I'm going to add about a half cup, three quarters cup of breadcrumbs to this mixture, working it in so that it combines with the butter that's in there and the, any other liquids that may have. You want to distribute it around so that when we add the egg, it will combine and I have two eggs here for that amount of breadcrumb. 
And we want then to bring all that together, and that should cause this to bind together, and yet not have a lot of breadcrumb, just enough to give it a consistency. So we can cook that until it dries out a little bit or combines, and we have our flounder dressing. Now I'm going to take that off heat right here and let that cool a little bit because we're going to have to handle that and I'd like not to burn my hands. In the meantime, let's go to our salad because it needs to age a little bit too. Turning this heat down, let's take a nice bowl and we have, and I've prepared all these things in order to save time. It's not a lot of fun to watch someone chop lettuce, uh, excuse me, celery, but I use the processor to do this simply to save time. Now I'm making only a half recipe here simply because it too saves time. And we have a full recipe already prepared in the refrigerator to serve. A good coleslaw, it's a wonderful accompaniment to seafood dishes. We have the purple cabbage and the white cabbage, which we're going to mix together. We have some carrots, grated. Some red onion, also grated. And some bell pepper, all grated. Now, we mix these ingredients together. These are the so-called dry ingredients because we now need to make a dressing to go in here. As you can see, it all comes together. It makes a beautiful, colorful, colorful salad. And the flavor is just terrific after it marinates for an hour or two in our basically mayonnaise dressing. And for that, we're going to take a nice little measuring cup. We're going to add about three quarters cup Half cup, three quarters cup of mayonnaise. We have about a quarter cup of vinegar. We have about a teaspoon of Dijon mustard. And some olive oil, about a quarter cup of olive oil. We want to blend all these together. And by using our little whisk, that should go fairly quickly. And then simply incorporate the two elements of this, which is the dressing and the vegetable. So by combining this in, the refri uh, in this nice bowl, we'll then let this refrigerate for a number of hours, at least an hour, and let the cabbage pick up all the flavors of that wonderful dressing. So let's put this in the refrigerator and we'll come back to the one that I prepared earlier since it has been aging for at least an hour. All right, we'll put that aside, come back. Now, we need to go to our fish. After all, that's the main course tonight. And for that, we have a nice, flounder. We have a whole flounder. A flounder is a flat fish. It's similar to a sole, it's a first cousin, or a small version of a halibut. And this fish swims on its belly, which is this side, and has both its eyes up front. And it has a very nice flat surface. We need now to remove the head. This fish has already been scaled and its intestines removed, so we don't have to fool with that. We simply no need to go through that backbone. It's a little tough at first, but once you get it going, we have the head removed and it serves no value to us. Now, in order to stuff this fish, we have to remove that backbone. Let's clean this fish off. And you will notice, particularly on the back, there's a little line down the back that indicates 
the position of the backbone on that side. Therefore, it's right down the center. So we start by taking a nice boning knife and we simply make an insertion in the fish about where the backbone is. We might start at the head up here instead. And we simply cut down to the tail, running the knife against that backbone. And then, with our knife, we simply slide it along the backbone, lifting this flesh and separating it from the backbone. Now we do that and go all the way down to these fins. My knife is actually touching all the way down. That skin is very tough. You're not likely to go through, even with a very sharp knife. And then come out the other side and simply come back to the backbone. We turn it over and do the same on the other side, slicing our knife against that backbone so as to remove all the wonderful flesh. And we go all the way over to those fin bones. It's easy to do. It's a little hard for me to keep my hands out of your face in the camera. But now, once we have done that, and make sure that it's separated right here, we're going to turn this fish over and do the same, except we're not going to cut the back. We're simply going to take our knife and run it down the backbone, separating right here that backbone, and then bringing the knife over, turning it toward the toward the backbone, we simply separate that flesh. Then we turn the knife going that way and do the same thing. And we have separated the backbone from the fillets on this fish, but left the fish whole. Now, we need to get that backbone out. A little piece of the intestines were left thin. Let's get rid of those. We'll wash this fish afterwards. We take a pair of kitchen scissors or shears and simply go down and find a point inside this fish where we can cut those small bones all the way back to the tail. Turning it around, I do the same. Even without seeing, I can feel I'm cutting the bones right along that way. Or we could go in at this end and cut those out. until we've separated the fish on that side. We do the same on the other side of the fish. These bones are very soft and cut very easily. The problem is trying to get your scissors down there and still have you see what's going on as best I can. All right, we then just simply cut these bones all the way out to the front. And if I've done my job, I should be. Let's caught in one little place. One little bone here needs to be cut through. We need to cut it at the tail. So that the backbone will be free. There we go. And making sure that it's free, I run my knife underneath that backbone. We should then be able to pull out the backbone with very little flesh left on the bone. We then have our flounder all filleted out. We need now to stuff that and get that into the oven rather quickly because the clock tells me we are not in the luxurious mood for time. So now we simply take our wonderful stuffing, crab meat, shrimp, onions, the pimento, very little seasoning, just salt and pepper, and we stuff this beautiful fish.
all the way up to the head. And let the stuffing show a little bit. Let's put this aside, wipe the hands, and then take a little bit of breadcrumbs. Here they are, the ones I'm looking for. Let's clean this up, make sure all the stuffing is in the center. And we simply cover this with a little breadcrumb. And a little paprika. And this beautiful piece of food goes into the oven for 25 minutes at 350 degrees, and the whole will bake and just be absolutely wonderful. Now, I've prepared some of that earlier, and we'll come back to that. Let's go to our Nassau grits now, because after an hour of cooking, our nice tomato mixture with the onions and the bell pepper have sort of stewed and become nice and flavorful and almost pasty. Now, before we started, I cooked some grits. We had four cups of water and a cup and a half of grits. Grits is a southern staple. It's a wonderful, it's not only a breakfast food. You can see it's nice and thick, and that's what I want, because now I need to add the grits to the aromatic vegetable mixture with the ham, getting all the grits that I can get out of this pot, and then blending the two together over some heat to keep them nice and hot. The grits were hot, and the, as you can see, the vegetable is nice and hot. To serve now, we have only to put that into a nice serving dish, which we'll bring on the center of the camera. And we'll simply put our grits mixture with its wonderful tomato and ham and pepper and onion flavor into a nice serving dish and put the final garnish on that, which will be some nice fried bacon. So we had a pound of bacon, which we started out, and we fried that, and that becomes the final garnish on our grits with tomato, ham, bell pepper, and onions. All right. So that's dish one. We'll put that into a nice liner and put that out for your consideration. We need now to go to the refrigerator and retrieve our wonderful coleslaw, which is going to be a great accompaniment to both the grits and the fish. And I put that into a nice big salad bowl. And you can see our grit. Our Cabbage has absorbed a lot of that dressing and has tenderized, and that's going to be our secondary dish. We need now to go to the oven and take out our nice baked flounder. This one was exactly like the one I did on camera, the same size. Just to illustrate, I've done two small ones. You can see the uncooked flounder was deboned, stuffed, and that, those are smaller ones. We want to place those on our serving platter. And let's see if I have the right gadgets. I did use some Pam on the bottom of this pan in order that the fish would not stick. And with my trusty lifter, I may be able to get it out. It looks like it's coming apart a little bit, but we have our tail came apart, but we'll doctor that up. And we have these small ones, which I'll serve in the dining room. We need only to garnish our platter 
with some nice lemon slices. Now, because we took the bone, this is easy to serve. We can cut through and give everybody a nice handsome piece. And of course, you can do two of these if you have a large crowd. The only other little garnish I would recommend on that is simply for color. We'll sprinkle around the platter is a little parsley. And we now have our Gulf Coast meal, the flounder, the grits, and coleslaw. Fantastic. We're going into the dining room. You look at the recipes and I'll see you there. Well, we have now completed our wonderful Gulf Coast cooking. You know, we're very fortunate here on the Gulf Coast. We have such an abundance of seafood. And flounder is one of those gems of the sea. And stuffed is probably one of the nicest ways to go. The white flesh of the meat uh, goes well with the shellfish and the aromatic vegetables. I already have a portion, a par rather large portion. I'm going to take a little bit of our Nassau grits to go with the the nice taste of the fish, and I'm gonna get a little bit of this delicious, nice creamy coleslaw to go and with the fish and give us a real Gulf Coast special. I think you'll enjoy this. I hope you'll try it. You can use other fish and stuff it with uh, various uh, stuffings like this one. Uh, this happens to be a wonderful way because it is a wonderful flat fish that's easy to do. I hope you'll try this. We're going to have a little white wine with this. We have some French bread to accompany all these other flavors. A wonderful meal. We're going to enjoy. I hope you'll join us and hope you will jo enjoy it also. Abiento. La douceur du temps nous fait des avances.